we're going to look at using the tar command in gzip real quick. Okay, and tar it's a command line tool. If I pull up the man page, um, it's you know short for tape archive, one of the tape archive commands, and there's several switches we want to use. But um, one of the ones that we'll want to use is C to create and X to extract. So C makes a tarball and X will extract a tarball. A tarball is a file created with tar. It's just a compressed archive. And tar can, you can back up a single file, an entire directory, you can back up an entire system. Um, I used to work at a place where we had tape drives and we would, you know, we had a couple of, um, we ran a database and we had a couple of AIX Unix servers and we would, you know, back up the entire servers with the tar command and CPIO and things like that. But it's very versatile. Um, there are lots of different options. Um, we can use P to save the permissions, and that's nice. If you went through the portal tutorial, and uh, installing the portal with uh, Apache 2, notice we spent a lot of time just trying to follow least privilege and tweak our permissions. And if we had too little permissions, it wouldn't work. But if we gave too many, too much permission, then you know it created security vulnerabilities, and so that takes a lot of tweaking. So if we're going to put all that work into it, it's nice to be able to back it up, and that P option will actually let us do that. We, we can save all of our permissions on all of the directories and the folders and the files that we have tinkered with and, and kind of figured out through trial and error. Um, verbose is a nice option because that will give us you know, feedback as far as what's happening with tar. Z, if you want to automatically compress it, you can either do it with tar if you use the Z option or you can do it after you make a tar ball by using the command gzip and gunzip to unzip. And then of course there's the F option to specify a file. Just going through this. Um, so what the tar command is and what the tar command does, now let's use it. Let's kind of see it in action. So I'm going to do sudo and I want to do tar. And I'm, you know, I'm going to need root privileges. And actually let me remove, I have a previous backup here. So I'm going to remove my previous backup. And there. Okay, and let's say I want to back up this directory. The command would be sudo tar. The switches I want to use in this case, I certainly want to save the permissions. Spent a, you know, a lot of time just trying to tweak that and trying to tighten it up and get it to where it would work, and yet not give too much permission or more permission than I needed. So kind of least privilege. Um, I want to create the tarball because it doesn't exist yet. So see, I want verbose mode to get extra feedback. Um, I'm going to go ahead and compress it automatically in F. I'm going to specify the file name of the, the archive. And I'm going to call it the same thing as the directory. So portal1, I'm going to call this portal1.tar. So always give it the .tar extension. And I have several choices. Um, I could back up portal1. Um, I could use a wildcard and grab the whole directory. In this case, I'll, I want to get this whole directory, and I also want to get the install CGI file. So I'm just going to use a wildcard and grab everything in the CGI bin right now. So if I did that, I would just hit enter. And in verbose mode, notice, notice how it gives us feedback. It shows us that it recursively went in to the subdirectories and child directories and backed everything up. Okay, And let's see the result. If I come over here, and then there's portal1.tar. Um, now let's say that you know something horrible happened. So um, let's go first let's go look at the permission here. So I'm going to cd into portal1 and I'm going to look at some of the permissions here. I right, say so these are just some of the permissions, the way they're set 755 and 775 and 777 on, on you know, different files and things inside that subdirectory. Okay. And so I'm just going to, I'm just going to rename. Um, We'll call it um, Portal 1 Broken. All right. So something happened. Portal 1 is no longer there. Portal 1 is broken. So we've made our tarball. Now how would we extract and restore from that tarball? And so again, I just want to kind of reverse the process. So sudo. I'm still going to use the command. And many of the same command line options, I want to restore with permissions, just like I saved with permissions. This time, instead of using C to create, I want to use X to extract verbose mode to get some feedback. Um, I'll need to decompress it and I need to specify the file name. And I'm going to, you know, the default, I'm just going to do it right here in the CGI bin. So um, the file name was portal1.tar. I'm going to go ahead and enter that. 
And when I do that, it's going to decompress the tarball and put everything back the way it was with all of those permissions. So it's, it's definitely a nice backup tool. And I can see there's Portal 1. Now let's go into Portal 1 and see what is there. Portal 1, and let me do a long listing here. And again, notice my permission, 755, 775, 777. Since I used the P option, everything is as it was. Now that's just one, you know, one application with maybe six, seven, maybe eight subdirectories. But again, if you, know, you could do an entire system with TAR if you want. Um, my, my Nokia 900 phone um, has you know, it's a, a Linux-based file system. It runs MAMO and uh, a Debian Linux as well as Android. And I use TAR to back it up. Um, pretty much, pretty much anything out there that is, you know, an ext3, ext4 file system. If it's got a TAR command, you can use TAR to back that system up, and it's a very good tool, very nice tool. That's sort of my favorite option because it, if you look where I use the the Z, it compresses and decompresses all in one step.